to the entrance hall, and this room has been restored to its former Georgian glory. So it has very delicate lines, soft colours, and curves, very typical of Georgian architecture. And also we have four rambles, one in each corner, and on this diagonal they represent daytime. And here we have Aurora, who is the goddess of daytime, and she is scattering the petals of dawn, and on her back she carries Hesperus, who is the genius of light. Also on this diagonal they represent darkness, and here we have uh, Nixus, who is the goddess of nighttime, and on her back she carries the twins of sleep and death. So the history of Highlands begins in 1730 and it was built for a man by the name of Sir John Comyn. So who was he? What do we know about him? Well he was a local man and he was living in Chelmsford even before Highlands House existed. He was a lawyer and a solicitor and he was moving up in the world of politics. He became a baron of the Exchequer and he was the MP for Morden. So he required a country house, a country seat that was suitable for a man of his standing in the community. So he employed local tradesmen and they built the very first Highlands House. It took two years to build and was completed in 1730. It was red brick by design and architecturally speaking we would say that it's in the style of Queen Anne and it had very formal gardens that were laid out and that was the fashion of the day. So the house has seen many changes in design for its history. Originally, when it was built by Sir John Commons, it stayed in his family between 1730 and 1797 and was red brick design. Then in 1797, we have a new owner, a man by the name of Cornelius Courtright, and he was a sea captain. He'd made his money trading uh, for the Dutch East India Trading Company in sugar and uh, also cotton. He decided he didn't like the red brick, so he employed quite a famous man called Humphrey Repton, who came to the house and gave us a new design. So now we see the house is covered in this white stucco and we see four iron columns placed at the front of the house, uh, known as a portico, and we also see the arrival of the east wing. Uh, the west wing came a little bit later. So here we are in the east wing that was built just after 1797 by Cornelius Courtright, but it's here that we can see the original red brick house. So this would have been the outside wall of that house from 1730. Uh, here we are in the salon and it's here that would be a waiting area for people coming to visit the house. So if you were here to see the master of the house, you would have made your way into the library. If you were here to see the lady of the house, you would have made your way into the drawing room. You'd also notice here in the salon we have uh, a coffered ceiling, so it's a ceiling that is sections within sections. The two sections south facing, these ones, have been completely restored. The house was in a semi-derelict state and went through a great period of restoration. Uh, the north facing ceiling though was pretty much intact and is original to the house. We've now come to the library and the one question that we get asked quite often is Well if this is the library, where are all the books? Good question. When the house was being inhabited, there were two giant bookcases either side of the fireplace. But of course now we're not able to keep books because you need constant humidity and constant temperature and we are predominantly a venue. When the last private owner, Mrs Hanbury, passed away in 1962, the house was boarded up and left in a semi-derelict state. It suffered from beetle infestation and fires and also thieves that broke in to steal the marble. Uh, luckily though, this fireplace was left intact there was a time when the house was used as a hospital and this was painted white. So when the thieves broke in, they didn't realise that this was actually an original black marble fireplace. So here we are in the drawing room and this room would have been used by the ladies of the house. So after dinner, they would have withdrawn to the withdrawing room and they would have been in here entertaining themselves, presenting plays, making music, knitting and sewing. This room has been restored to reflect its faded opulence and it also has these individual wall panels with the cameos in the centre and the borders around the outside, originally all hand painted in watercolour. We also have pewty around the outside. Now these are statuettes and they are a Victorian artefacts to convey your wealth and your status to your guests. And it's these that English Heritage decided to give Highlands House its great two star listed status they are very unusual in the fact that they are male and female. 
Um, also, we have the centerpiece of the room, um, chandelier, and we had an offer to clean this from a company called Trotters Independent Traders, who we gracefully declined. So I hope you've really enjoyed our virtual open house day today. And from all of the team at Highlands Estate, we hope that you keep safe, keep well, and we look forward to seeing you at a future open house when it's safe to do so.